Um, I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to, you know, see if Habiba, you wanted to give us a little bit of a sense of sort of like what's next for you? Like, what are you working on now? I know you just came off of this marathon of completing this podcast and hopefully you're taking a much deserved rest because that is so critically important um, yeah. to recharge and fuel up and feed the tank. But how are you sort of thinking about the next, the next leg of your, your creative journey? Yeah. Um, I, as you said, I'm trying to take a break, but I, it's hard. I'm not good at it. Um, the next project, um, I, I am certainly exploring some podcasts that I want to follow up with on um, that I think similarly would tell stories that from a perspective we don't hear from. Um, but I'm also working on a film project, which is um, about families with kids with terminal illnesses and it's partly inspired by an experience that I that I had um, I am an adoptive mother and when I adopted my daughter I was told that she likely has a genetic disorder and she'll only live till she's 18 months and I mm. something happened to me in that moment when I heard that and I just thought okay if we've got 18 months to live how are we going to make sure it's the best darn 18 months of that, that we can possibly have time mattered to me in that moment in ways that I had never imagined or thought about um you know ultimately she ended up having a genetic disorder but in in her case it's not terminal but I wanted to capture the experiences of families who who do get this news and who get told you have a year to live or your child has a year to live. How do you, how do you, what do you do with that? And I think for parents who don't, don't have that lived experience, I, I think it's, there's so much to learn from those conversations because after working on this and thinking about this, I just began to make choices very differently. I began to you know, if I was going to work on a project, I would, I would, this might sound very morbid, but I was like, if I had a year to live, is this the project that I would do? Mm. And if the answer is no, I'm like, I don't really want to do it. So it just, it reshifts your priorities. If you just think about time differently and, and the value of making art and making or doing work that matters to you. So I think, you know, as depressing as it, is, it, is, it is, as it might sound, there are just so many amazing families I've met along the way who, who've experienced this, who have so much to teach us um, that that's what I'm trying to capture in this, in this film. So wow. that's what happened. That sounds amazing. Um, it, it sounds just heartrending and, um, uh, but also like, I'm, I'm just really amazed just hearing about sort of like the thematic and emotional perspective that you're bringing to it. Like it sounds, it sounds, I mean, I, you know, I don't have that lived experience, but as a parent, it seems like that would be something that would be just incredibly hard to watch. But I love the way that you're able to sort of frame it from this perspective around a different way of looking at life and the way that there's universal sort of, there's emotional universality in that, in the way that you frame it in a way that goes beyond just sort of the experience of having this particular experience with your family. So it sounds uh, amazing and just incredibly just emotionally expansive. So I, I wish you all the best of luck with that project. Thanks. And I look forward to learning more about it. Um, and if as people a, want to fund it, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now we're talking. Um, well, Habiba, I want to thank you so much for taking this time to uh, discuss thank you, your career and your work and your creative practice as um, a journalist and an artist and the intersections in between and just your wonderful body of work. It's just, it's such a joy for me, um, just, you know, having, you know, been able to sort of like be a small part of your artistic development and just to see the way that you've sort of flourished over the years. and. Um, I know our audience is watching really deeply appreciated such a just a deep dive like this as well. Um, so for folks who are looking to experience more of your work or to follow you on social media, where can they do that? Where can they watch your films or or just learn more about your work or follow your work? Yeah, um, I guess uh, they can visit my website. So that's just, uh, you know, habibanoshin.com. 
Um, but uh, they can check out the podcast um, that is on Spotify. It's called The Disappearance of Naseba Hassan. It's season three of a show called Conviction. So um, it is only on Spotify. So you can check it out there. Um, and uh, the uh, film Outlawed in Pakistan is available on PBS's website and Frontline's website. So they can check out that for free. Um, and yeah, I think um, if anyone has any thoughts or comments, anything that my work made them think about it or what they hated about it, I always encourage people to, to write in and, and, and tell me that. Or if they want to cut you a check for your next film. Yes, yes, you know, that too. <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, thank you again so much. It was such a good excuse just to be able to spend a little bit more time with you. Yeah. Um, and really grateful to SAI for having us here for the conversation. Um, I hope we can do this again sometime.